It was in 306 AD that Constantine appeared in a leading role as the head of the Roman Empire. That year, his father, Constantius Chlorus, who was one of the two Augusti in the Tetrarchic system, died of illness in York. A coup d'etat by the troops of Brittany appointed Constantine to succeed his father. A few years later, in 312 AD, Constantine resides in Trier and decides to conquer Rome to reunify the Roman Empire under his authority. To this end, he made an alliance with Licinius, a former friend of Galerius who had also become Augustus and Emperor of the East, who was then in Gaul. Constantine's army, made up of 25,000 men, crossed the Alps at Mont Genève. Once he arrived in Italy, Constantine took the city of Susa before reaching Turin, where he defeated the troops of Maxentius. After a series of victories, including the capture of Milan, Constantine advanced toward his goal, Rome. Constantine wanted to secure his leadership in the West. For that, he must face Maxens, who reigned, in theory, on the western part of the empire. But in fact, after the conquest of Constantine, his authority was exercised only in Italy. The decisive battle took place at the Milvian Bridge, a few kilometers north of Rome, on the banks of Tiber, on October 28, 312. This encounter is considered a crucial event in the destiny of the Roman Empire. Maxentius was expected to remain in Rome and suffer a siege. He has already used this strategy successfully twice in the past. This time, he chose to face his enemy in an open battle. Maxentius arrived with his soldiers near the Milvian Bridge, built two centuries earlier on the right bank of the Tiber, at the place where the Flaminian Way crosses the river. He also installed a bridge of boats a few meters away, using it to cross the river. Constantine had a vision on the eve of the fighting. Tradition says that he would have perceived in the sky a luminous X-shaped cross, crossed by a P, designating Christ, and surrounded by the Latin phrase, in hoc signo vinces, by this sign, you will conquer. Constantine then paints this symbol, the Le Brown, on the shield of his soldiers. Maxentius's army is described as being so numerous that its formation was as deep as it was wide. It took some time for Maxentius's army to cross the Tiber and deploy its combat formation. The space he had at the southeastern end of the Tor de Quinto was limited and ill-suited to a typical linear formation. Maxentius's cavalry, split into two wings, positioned itself between the right flank infantry and the bank of the Tiber. Praetorians and veteran legionaries would have been lined up within the main division. The Italian and African conscripts formed a second division. This risky tactic, which left no room for maneuver, nor any line of retreat to the Maxentian forces, encouraged Constantine to attack him straight away. On October 28, 312, Constantine launched the offensive against Maxentius. Maxentius was thought to have brought around 30,000 troops in total that day. Constantine's left wing opened the battle, assaulting his enemy's right-wing cavalry force. Soon after, Constantine advanced his infantry lines in the center.
Two armies are now fully engaged in battle. Maxentius's right wing retreated toward the second line of cavalry he had placed in reserve. The center was under heavy pressure, and although Constantine's veteran infantry gave ground, they kept their ranks and battled Maxentius's forces. On Constantine's left, Maxentius pushed again with his cavalry reserve. On the right, he assaulted the enemy's cavalry division, which was less numerous. After successfully routing both flanks, Constantine pushed the cavalry towards the Milvian Bridge. Maxentius and his reserve infantry tried to run, making the escape across the Tiber River. He was pursued by the cavalry, while some of Maxentius' men were able to cross the river.
Most of the fleeing infantry was cut down and Maxentius was thrown into the river and drowned. To the north, the Praetorian forces were surrounded by Constantine's army as they made their final stand. Noticing the Praetorian courage, he decided to spare them. After this victory, Constantine claimed the entire Western Empire for himself, while his ally Licinius claimed the Eastern Empire. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more, please make sure to support the channel by liking, commenting and subscribing.